Okay. So yeah, uh, in the introduction of the uh, introduction of the Charlie's document, you have seen what uh, type of task are you going to do by, by this week. So <clears throat> the first thing or the first task is to to identify whether some contents are AI generated or they are um, humanly written or humanly then contents. So of course we acknowledge the benefit of AI, uh, the advantage, how creative or how like how we can get some new information from using LLMs or AI. But you know so there's some situations that might that we should uh, uh, think of or assume or like consider while using AIs. And yeah, that is uh, that's listed on the challenge uh, document, and you have seen that. So now we are going to see some techniques to identify AI-generated content. So when we say contents, yeah, yeah, like most of the time it's the written content. So in this case, you're you're given email and marketing content <coughs> in your task. So we're going to focus on written contents. Um, okay, let me just check the recording once. Okay, so the first one is uh, analyze write, uh, writing style and tone. <clears throat> so what is this? AI-generated content often lacks the variability and human touch for the natural writing. Look for inconsistency in writing style and natural transition or overly formal language that might indicate automated generation. So uh, they, they don't vary, you know, like the, the thing or the way of talking or the tone that we have noticed on the first line or press description it's going to follow throughout the um the answer or the content when it's ai generated uh, let's see this example and we'll get back to the definition so for example let's see this <coughs> content the quarterly report presents a detailed analysis of market trades and financial performance the data indicates look, the quarterly report then the data indicates robust growth across all sectors with promising opportunities for strategic expansion additionally you know, the report highlights key initiative for optimizing operational efficiency and enhancing stakeholder value then overall the comprehensive insights provided in this report underscore our commitment to delivering shareholders value and driving sustainable growth so like well, we were starting on almost every line or every uh, sentence, like the quarterly, the data, the report, right? Same tone and same uh, way of telling the information for the user. So this is one of the character, what, what, this is what we meant by it lacks the variability or it don't vary in terms of explaining the um, the written thing or the content. It lacks to vary in uh, the way and yeah, you no know, human touch and also, uh, it's uh, it have the same tone or the same uh, it addresses people in the same or the it addresses the content the information in the same way so that's what we mean and like we can analyze the right first we can start by analyzing the writing style and the tone you know whether like how is it, is the tone varying throughout the content and uh, is the writing style might be like differing a little bit we can see that is that equation or Okay, there's no one who raised their hand. Abdu okay. Abdulaziz Mohammed. Okay. okay. Thank you on the example that we saw earlier. What would be the tone if it's written by the human being? I mean. Yeah, that's a good question, but it's the it's something that we can create or we can write. Okay, let's just go through the this example and let's see how we can write it. The quarter report presents a detailed analysis for market trends and financial performance. So it's talking about report, right? The design the data indicates robust growth across all sectors with a promising opportunity for strategic expansion expansion. Additionally, the report highlights. So like we might make it uh, we're talking about the quarterly report here. So like as a human, I don't see the point of uh talking about the data in the middle and getting back to the report highlights at last. So I will try to finish uh, the, my information or I will try to like to, to to introduce or to say something about the report. And inside the report, the data indicates ro uh, robust growth across all sectors with a promising opportunity. I can continue like that. <clears throat> and uh, so, yeah, let's, um, this is the first step that I will, I will use and maybe 
and if the uh, order is going to be like this i will definitely search another word instead of the the instead of the word the you know let's is the like is there some question again yeah let me just finish for abdullah's question and let's just figure it out and well, I'm, I, I will get back to the other questions mm, the quarterly so this indicates robert grows across all the sectors within promising opportunities for strategic expansion uh, so yeah yeah we just mentioned that i'm not going to include the i'm not going to talk about it. yeah for the sake of removing the z i will use this one z for all for both the things that are described here and here for about the report mm. Overall, all the comprehensive insights provided in this report underscore our commitment to delivering shareholders. And the, I think the, the summary part is uh, uh, fine. And the overall word, if you notice, that mostly chat GPT and other AI tools, actually, they use overall for the summarization purpose. And this also indicates something. So yeah, I think that's what I will do removing the uh, yeah and including same things in same order and also the results the data indicates robust it's about the growth and promising opportunity so you know the positive things are at last right report key initiatives for optimizing operational efficiency those are the positive things that that are seen on the report right so i will also collect all the positive things and instead of mentioning the positive things in every line i will try to put them together at the end or on the summary part that that's i think you also can give uh, some suggestion if you have like what will you do if you, if you, if it were you if you were writing this content what other options will you use or you'll just go with the actually how are you going to edit the answer from the ln so Abdullah, does it make sense somehow? Yeah, it's somehow it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. But I mean, my concern is there is a human variability when writing uh, some content, right? There are diverse ways of style in writing. So some people might write in the same way as AI, as AI generated content, content. And I don't know how that will be managed. Yeah, that's definitely right. But on this case yeah some people might try the in the way that ai is writing but that's not the recommended way or like that's this type of uh, writing is how most of the ais work or like when we address when we when we ask them uh, many types of questions that is how they're going to give us the answer so mostly this kind of answer will, will resemble for, to the ai generated contents but it's not always the case yeah that's that's right thank you Okay. Okay. Uh, Sina or Sina? I am definitely wrong while pronouncing your name, but you can go. On. Okay. Okay. Uh, thank you for for the opportunity. Okay. So uh, I agree with Mohammed. Actually, uh, I find this very confusing. I mean, it kind of what what you just uh, uh, described kinds of like reminds me of. Uh, my uh, English uh, classes where we where we were told why we have to use pronouns and all the like and repeat it. So this is how we used to write actually. Keep on repeating the same stuff. We're human beings and then we're taught that uh, we had to use some pronouns and uh, we had to vary the sentences. We shouldn't keep on repeating the same thing. So human beings actually do this. I can guarantee you and then it's hard without even uh, knowing the context. For instance, if I'm writing about, uh, or if I'm writing a scientific report to someone to, who is not uh, familiar with science, it would be hard for them. I mean, they'll be dealing with the science, like trying to understand what I'm trying to say. And at the same time, they have to, uh, they have to pick up that uh, it's whether it's been written by AI or a human being. So, there are some uh yeah, I got you. in order to address the first question well uh, before that you know uh, in this case we're assuming that the contents that are being generated for marketing or like for email marketing or just market and another marketing type okay they're not just contents that are going to be generated with like uh, for any company there are 
digital market uh, digital marketers and like different kinds of marketers right so there are some professionals who are specified for this job and mostly they won't do that you know they're not going to do they're not going to um, create uh, some content that is uh, redundant and that's somehow boring and like uh, that includes some of the mistakes that we're mentioning that uh, the generative ai uh, actually the ai will cause they're not going they will try to not include that it's not just random person so when we are when we are comparing the contents we're not comparing them with what type of uh, content i am going to write if i were if i was on the place of uh, uh, the LLA. we're going to assume what type of um content will the, that professional that specific professional or if it is an email you know hr or some specific uh, targeted people are going to write those emails if it is for a company so how are those targeted people are going to write the email or how are those marketers are going to create the content so it's not we cannot compare it with everyone so everyone can create the mistake but those people they are going to try as much as possible and also there's you know if you're a content uh, of course if you're a content creator it should be creative it shouldn't be redundant those are just loops it's not a law for everyone do you get my point Jusina? and also somehow yes, uh, it's also includes abdulaziz yes yes i i do get your point uh, so maybe what i was saying was that is for me who is not familiar with this uh, field of uh, marketing for instance so while I'm reading a sentence and I'm trying to understand what this person is trying to communicate and if in marketing is that is this how uh, uh, how they communicate and at, at the same time I find it hard to pick up uh, the stuff uh, that I need to pay attention to like the the repetitions that you have mentioned for instance so it's just a challenge for me personally actually mm okay so yeah, at the end of the day the mar you know the content creator is going to will try to provide the content as much as easier as possible for people to for people for people to understand you know who is going to read the content i mean those specified group of people we should understand the content you're right my point is it's not we can't compare it you know like if i'm going if i'm the if i'm the one who is going to create for example the this uh, content that we've seen here i might even create it in the worst uh, actually i will absolutely create it in a worst form of uh, you know worse form than this that's obvious and i i might say okay it's okay there's that in four place uh, that's fine you know for me it's fine but it's not going to be fine for people who are who are expert experty in this specific task in content creating email writing or something you know depending on the position and the purpose of the writing exactly exactly that is my point so is that clear yeah can we proceed yes <clears throat> so um let's see somehow the problem with this uh, content the transition between topics are smooth and structured you know there is actually we can say that there's also there's no transition i can say that typically of automated generation i mean it would have been so much better i uh, if i can if i had included some form that are really this is the nicer form of uh, communicating this uh the, this news or this content i i just understand that it could have been better that way but you know uh, if you ever have seen some marketing contents and things you, you will understand you'll definitely understand typical of automated generation so the language used is professional right so professional additionally this the data indicates so like if it was for presentation or something we can make it somehow somehow playful or easy so it's literally every tone is professional let may come across as slight robotic or lacking the human touch commonly found in natural written content so this characteristic suggests the possibility of AI involvement in generating this content. So this is one of the techniques that we might use. The second one is review grammar and spelling. Mostly there might be an error in grammar and spelling. That is in a case that we, we, you're going to mention something that is not familiar with the AI, okay? For example, let's say we're, we're writing about a price, we're writing an email about a price of a machine, uh, which is not the, that much famous or which is a local machine 
like for your, I mean, which have a local name in your country. So like you just wanted the AI to create you a content about how the machine works and how the how much uh, the prices and things. And so it will absolutely miss, uh, cannot or cannot spell the name of the machine right. Or something that is new, new type of grammar for the AI. So those types of things, they might might be wrongly sp spelled. So uh, pay attention to grammatical errors or unusual sentence structures. Another one is examine metadata. So you have probably seen that sample platforms may include metadata or information about the content generation process. Check for indications that content was generated. So like when we create something in AI, uh, the first party, if it is not edited, actually, the first part is, um, sure, I can give you the, right? Sure, I can give you an answer for this, right? <laughs> so you can even you can even consider that. And most of the time, there are tags included, AI-generated, automated content generated by AI platform X, and they might be for quoting to be edited. Additionally, the emails, timestamp, and delivery schedule align with automated marketing campaigns further confirm, confirming the use of AI in generating this promotional material. So what is this? Like when we, like depending on the on the email or the delivery date of the email, when you just create uh, the time, the the email using an AI, it might not be correctly addressed, the dates. They might be, you know, go back or like be really, you know, they might not be uh, rightly communicated and they might also help us as a tool to determine the, whether the thing is auto generated or whether the content is generated or written. Um, by the way, those things are not something that are that will work 100%. So those are the things that we might use, you know, in percentage, we're going to even put them in a person. This person, that's not, mm, you know, this person, we, it's not, it's, uh, it's not uh, AI generated or it is AI generated with by this person. So they are not something that I say line, you know, and too perfect to be true. First up, check if the writing style feel almost too perfect. So perfect that doesn't sound like how people actually communicate. Um, too, too perfect in terms of using grammar. Uh, too perfect also in terms of, you know, saying that this is the right thing. I mean, this is like, we're confident about it. You know, people sm might hesitate to say, if they, since we know the situation well, we might say that we hope this is going to work. But AI might say, yeah, this will definitely work. And if the tone, like, if the tone of the email or the content throughout the passage is confident or so ambitious, and it's the issue is something that is not somehow possible to be done or uh, to be uh, to be true, then it might also be something generated from AI. And notice patterns. Yeah. Okay. Sina, again, you can go. Yes, uh, uh, I wanted to comment on this uh, 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 AI uh, material being too perfect. I mean, if I read something that's been written by somebody else and then it seems like to be too perfect, then it will be hard for me actually to, to see how it could have uh, how it could have the human touch. I mean, like we strive for, for perfection and then we try to make our writing perfect. And all that, like if somebody else has written something and then I find that it's too perfect, then I think, okay, maybe I should be writing this way too. So yeah, uh, I will I, still, uh, I wouldn't tell if uh, it's uh, been generated by AI by, uh, looking at it and seeing that uh, it looks perfect i don't know how how, how you think of your of, of this yourself if you find something written and then it seems mm -hmm. perfect do you find it impressive or do you say okay this sounds like it's been written by ai or a robot okay get you again so the after all we're going to write the prompts to generate that content right so AI, I mean the AI, based on the things that we have written or based on the like the goal that we have written, 
it's going to it might draw some scenarios you know so like let's say um I'm just trying to find, you know, the, the, the example might be silly, but let's say my goal is to my goal is to grow uh, a plant within a week. There's a plant in front of me, so, so like let's say uh, my goal is to grow a plant within a week, and I wanted to write some content how this is going to work or how growing one plant within a week is going to be real. Since I believe, let's say I believed on that thing, okay. It, it's a it's a type of plant that can grow within a week. So when I give that prompt for AI, it might say, so like and be make it re reasonable might be my prompt, make it reasonable or make them believe that I'm going to grow that plant in one in one week. Okay. So it might say, since the air of the the the, the climate of the country is very nice and the environment is uh, so uh, comfortable for the plant, it will definitely grow and. I know that the environment, the climate, the climate nowadays might not be uh, suitable to grow the plant. Okay, maybe like the readers or the the people, the people who are going to read the content, they know that this, they might know that the current climate situation is not right to grow a plant. There might be another reason that made me believe that I can grow the plant within one week, but the thing that or the point that the AI mentioned is not right. It's so like so good to be true. Okay, so it's definitely wrong, and people can understand. People who know, people who know the about the climate and about plant, they can tell that this is all AI generated. This is not humanly generated. Okay, it's a silly example, but that, does it make sense? See you now, it's after all, it's not about the goal. It's yes. the process. Okay. Yes, uh, it makes sense, but it reminds me of uh, uh, what someone wrote on uh, uh, CBS, uh, where they were telling stories uh, that were told by their parents or their relatives when they were young i mean as kids we get used to these stories so uh if i read it okay <laughs> in a serious context i agree but uh, okay. if i'm reading a book for, for kids or i don't know then i will say okay this is a nice story and uh, okay. yeah we're used to I such stories which are not true yeah 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 i just say this is a very silly uh, story you know but you can change it to some serious situations i mean uh like we can write. Do you all give my point? It's not about the plants. It's about there is. We yes. can put some goal. Okay. Yes. Yes. I get you. Uh, anyway, thank okay. you. Thank you. So um, the other point is noticing the patterns. So the first one is using too many emojis. Have you ever tried uh, to generate some? Uh, advertising or add uh, contents for your telegram for your like they ha they use definitely too much emojis and you can just tell by you seeing the content that oh this is AI generated which is okay uh so like but you can tell that how many emojis or how often are you with are you are we using the emojis and then we can conclude by that and starting long from copy with the same variation in the era of subject i mean what is the era Okay. okay. Uh, if it was human, let me tell you. If 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 it was, uh, let's say that I'm trying to um, I'm trying I'm trying to promote a soap or I'm trying to talk about some soap. Okay. So definitely, if there is if there is uh, a human, we're going. Definitely, it's not definitely. If if it was a human, but we might make that like, do you want to smell clean? Do you, do you want to look clean? Okay. So, but if we give uh, the uh, the AI to to talk about or to write some content about that soap, mostly it will start by this soap, like by defining the. Again, it depends on our prompt, but it will mostly start by defining about the material or era of the subject. It it starts or it 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 loops or it uh, keep mentioning the subject. Okay. So it's uh, something that is related with I think with the first one it, it the tone will be similar and the other one is alliteration to articulate an appealing arrangement of words i mean let's see this example for this one discover the power of precision and performance okay, and you can tell me why what what wrong things that you've noticed here discover the power of precision and performance with our premium products experience excellency every day with our expertly engineering solution 
elevate your experience without expect expectational expertise. Those three words are words that mostly, if, if, if it was human, we're going to choose which one is better from the three mentioned contents. But, but they're not something that are going to be, uh, uh, they're not good when they are included as same, in the same paragraph and things like that, okay? They are good while mentioning, since they are like telling same kind of story and same kind of motivation. So it's a, like an appealing arrangement of words. You can see that, like discover the power of precision and performance with our premium, experience this and elevate your experience, okay? So this is definitely mostly uh, generated content. Another one is weird idioms and slang. So there are some slangs or, you know, type of uh, quotes that we tell in some culture, some different language, right? So, but here AI tries its base, but often gets those slightly wrong. So it can relate some of the idioms uh, to some content or to some um, situations, but at the end of the day, they might not write them correctly since they're not very familiar with them. <laughs> Sorry. So uh, it might use a common saying that appears in the text in a way that just feels a bit off, like tourists trying to use local slang, but not quite getting it. So if you spot an idiom that feels forced into the copy, it's another side. It's not only just an idiom, it, it's, it might be even type of saying uh, uh, something related with that country. Uh, if, the, if they just mention something that is not related with the topic, something specific, but that, that's not related with the topic, so we can sense that they are, it's their uh, AI generated. The other one is playing it safe. They mostly play safe. So speaking of opinion, AI tends to play it safe. So it won't dive into contro contro controversial opinions or come up with groundbreaking ideas on its own. At least for now, it means like uh, the AIs that we're mostly we're using now. So let's see this. The latest industry report highlights steady growth in the market. Oh. Yeah, the industry report highlights steady growth in the market with promising opportunities for business. Our analysis indicates a positive outlook for the upcoming quarter, while with potential for increased market share and profitability. As business navigates the evolving landscape, strategic investment in innovation and customer engagement remain key priorities. Here I can agree that this might also be humanly human created content, right? I am not sure how much, uh, it depends, okay? It depends on the content, mostly. It depends on the uh, uh, on the title or, or, or on the situation, which of the characteristics are going to evaluate this content uh, than the others, okay? So there might be some contents that are going to be measured very well in this, on the sixth one, on the playing it safe. But, uh, you know, there might be, I think this, I can say that this content is somehow, like it, it could also be real, it could also be humanly created. But there are some situations while playing it safe, we can say that, oh, the, the, the AI is trying to play this safe because it's, it's not going to mention the risks, it's not, it's not going to mention any controversial opinions or ideas, okay? Yeah, unless and otherwise we, we mentioned the other side, the negative side within our prompt. So um, here I just included this advantage of AI generated marketing content. So look, the thing that we that I want you or that I want us to take from this is not about the disadvantage. It's since it have this uh, negative character or I mean negative uh, output, we need to work on that. Or so depending on the negative output, we can, we can determine some marketing contents that are not that are AI generated or that are humanly written. <coughs> So lack of creativity. So in mar while coming to marketing, creativity is a mandatory thing, right? It's somehow like be creative might make the, actually there are a lot of um, marketing companies, companies who are using uh, AI tools for marketing, but it's, it lacks creativity. Even like we can, even we may, if we mention that be creative, that's going to be creative in a redundant way and in a like in, in an uncool way mostly. So like, let's see this, AI-generated content may, like, may lack the creativity and originality that human-created content can provide. This can result in generic, bland, or uninteresting marketing materials. Our new product is innovative, cutting-edge, and re revolutionary. It's designed to me, so, okay, so it's not creative. It's literally not creative at all, but 
it's not also the problem is not uh, also the creativity uh i think it doesn't even understand the uh like the thing that is that it is promoting okay wait let me see here yeah so yeah uh, it's not it's it is just mentioning the like it's innovative solution i think it's in revolutionary that is designed to meet all your needs and exceed your expectation with state of the art technology and parallel performance it's the ultimate solution for your business don't miss out this amazing opportunity so it's the like the flexible and somehow the playful thing comes here i mean marketing contents are supposed to be playful as we can but don't miss out this amazing opportunity is the you know is the most flexible thing that i can see here uh, so they lack creativity and lack origin originality which means they just put you know we just put the product for them we just inputted the, how the product is going to work and they just formulated that into sentence but they didn't add, add anything and it lacks originality <laughs> okay Okay, thank you already. Uh, my question is, I mean, uh, they are create, uh, you said that they, they lack creat creativity, right? So yeah. what I was thinking is, what I was thinking is their ability to demonstrate their creativity, creativity is dependent on the uh, prompt that we are going to give it, right? by yep. it, it will be influenced by the quality and the specificity the specificity of the prompt that we are going to give it yeah. is that yeah, possible to generalize these models are not creative i mean yeah you're right but you know like them in every aspect not only on the creativity aspect but you know in in in, in every aspect in most of the aspects that we have mentioned when you when while your prompt is more very more good like while if you have a very quality prompt most of the problems you can solve like not every problem but most of the problem th those are the problems that you can solve but mostly people using this ai tool will fail to use the prompt to its best quality so that they will th those kinds of problems might happen a lot the first one is that but and the second thing as i mentioned before they can be creative i mean if you remember on the Mm, LLM Olympics. We were trying, the, the, especially on, like there, there, there were some questions uh, that required the uh, LLM to be creative, right? They are somehow creative, okay? So that depends on the prompt, and mostly if it is for promotion and for marketing thing, the creativity is not going to align with our needs. For example, th th we needed to, uh, we needed to promote something in this, like in this country and another country. We might want it to be in different types of, like, we might expect different type, kind of ex um, creativity. I mean, there might be something, or like the, if you remember again on that Olympic, there the, the first station, it's it's re somehow the prompt relates it with mountains and things and things depending on the country. If it is another country, you might want to relate it with another thing. So depending on the place or like uh, and situations it have different creativity level but exactly it will be creative but also it's not that creative it's redundant type of creativity abdulaziz does it make sense yeah thank you okay okay let's see uh yeah, uh, we've seen this. <clears throat> the second one is inability to adopt context or emotions. AI may struggle to understand the emotional nuance of marketing messages or adapt content based on contextual factors like current events or cultural trends. Yeah, yeah th this is the thing that I was mentioning. This can lead to content that feels out of touch or insensitivity. So, <clears throat> so yeah, they might have, you know, they, they, they're not going to, they're not going to understand the situation of the cultural or like depending on the time, depending on the country, they're not going to understand the situation as we understand it. And so that they cannot merge things that we wanted to merge into the, their content as uh, smoother as we can. In light of recent events, we're excited to announce our latest production launch. 
with our cutting edge technology and unmatched features, we're confident it will revolutionize the industry. Get ready for a game changing experience like never before. But definitely, in, if 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 the, like if I was the one who's creating this content, uh, and like I will somehow relate this to revolutionize in a country trying to revolutionize the industry, like in a, or in a era in a uh, time while everything is becoming. Um, yeah, like uh, the while we're creating many innovative things and everything is revolutionizing, I will add something that will relate to the current situation, to the world situation, and something like that. Uh, but they have inability to adapt to adapt context, context, so they will provide the pro the promotion as it is. Uh, there is risk of uh, unintended message or bias. AI models trained on biased data or with flawed algorithms may un unintentionally, unintentionally produce marketing content that perpetuates stereotypes, biases, or inappropriate messaging, which can damage brand reputation. Definitely, this is a problem, but mostly they are somehow careful in uh, saying some stereotypical things, but they might think they might say something that is not related with that company. Okay. For example, if they ha if like let's say we're trying to promote Tesla, and if they don't have obviously they have enough information about Tesla, but let's say that they don't have that information about Tesla, but they so they they might say something like their electronics um, material is perfect, you know, which electronics? I mean, their let's they they might say their phones and things something unreal or. Uh, Unintended message that will not describe that company. Lack of human connection. It's also related with the. It's mentioned above. They may lack the human touch and empathy that, that human creators can infuse into marketing materials, making it harder to establish genuine connection with the audience. And genuine connection while doing marketing is important. As I told you, it's going. The content is going to be written by some professionals. Um, Beside all these things, yeah, we can make uh, we can get the most out of AI depending on the prompt, as we have seen the last two and uh, like the last two and three weeks. But at the end, the, those are the problems that we can see or notice. Those are the ways. But of course, there are some tools that will some of them put what percentage of the content uh, resembles to to be. Um, uh, generated using AI tools, or what percent of it is since like real. So one, of, some of them will put you the percentage, and some of them will put you it's AI generated or it's just evaluated. So <clears throat> don't forget to check them out. But you know, those are not the that this is not the goal. Our goal is to find out the situation, the uh, like the techniques or some parameters that is going to help us to determine generated AI generated contents from written content from uh, just humanly created content so that we can work on how to make the uh, generated contents resemble to the human content okay it's not it's it's not always about the prompt it might be after getting the <laughs> after getting the content we can of course we should edit it and by editing it we can somehow bring it to humanly created content so yeah Thank you. Uh, Sina, is that a question? Yes, I think uh, you have just answered my question. I was going to ask you uh, uh, what happens if uh, the content has been edited. Uh, so uh, as you just mentioned, that uh, then does the goal is to is to prompt uh, uh, well and then uh, to edit it to bring it to bring it to the human level. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, yeah, the one last thing is that uh, if you're not familiar with uh, the context, then uh, this. Sina? Mm. Okay, so like to address the first question, I just forgot. Yeah, the goal, as I told you before, the goal of this uh, knowing the problems uh, is, is not uh, like we're going to continue to use them, but at the end we're going to know where to focus or what part of them to edit what part of them to make uh, flexible in order to make it or in order to yeah make it make it resemble to the human created content that's the goal and sina you were out somehow 
So have you finished your points? Okay. And is there another question or thing? Okay, I'm there. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Anyone with question? Okay. Ura. And Kola Jane Ura. Okay, we can just start from the female. Okay. Yeah, thank you very much for the presentation. My concern about this assignment, especially for this week, is uh, our how we'll be able to judge if this thing is um, AI generated or human generated will be based on our proficiency in writing individually. Because what I will read as an email and I will consider it as too perfect or not perfect is a function of how proficient I am. So I want to see. How proficient you are in what? In writing uh, the prompts or like? Yeah, are we? Is uh, it does not? I don't know. Is there going to be a benchmark for flexibility? Because this would be more of um, using our discretion in deciding. Okay, I think this is too perfect, or I think this is not perfect, or I think there's a. Because I am just having that I'm um, thinking since um, the training has started. Thank you. Okay, that's okay. Uh, if I get your point right, the, the thing that you should worry about is, especially on the first task, it's about, you know, you can't say that, if, as I told you before, depending on some parameters, one, two, or three parameters, you can't just, you can't, it's not a 50-50 chance, okay? You can just, on the analysis part, you can just say that this part, depending on evaluating it on this parameter, we can say that it's somehow, or morally, it's 80%, 70%, uh generated content or this percent here like human created content so you're going to make analysis on the like you've seen the task right so depending on those uh evaluation uh matrix you're going to evaluate using whatever uh parameters you, you feel like taking from the ppt or, or from this presentation and other parameters so depending on those parameters you'll just evaluate it this resembles ai generated tool or not okay Ura. Ura, Ura okay it might be by mistake abdullah this hello okay Ura. yeah yes uh, my question go. is about the guide table we were given to perform the analysis mm -hmm. can you please um put us through how to use it. I was supposed to use a scale of 100 and say, okay, this feels like it's 50% um, AI generated or how exactly I was supposed to use the okay. table? Actually, we will make the description. I will put you the description in Slack after the session, but it's not a mess to put it in numbers. I mean, it more resembles like, it's also like uh, a, pos a possible way to put it in numbers, but you cannot, put every aspect in numbers, it's going to be, it might be somehow uh, uh, not right for you. So like depending on your need, as uh, as the uh, like as the information that I have until now, you can put it in your own way. Uh, like lack of detailed knowledge or personal, you can put it in numbers. So you could just say yes or no, like yes, it lacks the, personal uh, or like detailed knowledge it lacks detailed knowledge or it have detailed knowledge so that i can you know depending on this parameter i can say that it's more of ai generated content okay it's formal it's it's using it's not formal actually it's somehow playful and also formal and it's not uniform so that i in this depending on this aspect i can say that it's more of um, a content that is created that is humanly created content so like you can take whatever measurement you want but i'm going to make sure and i'm going to let you know in the in slack okay all right thank you thank you Ra. okay Abdulaziz. okay thank you uh for the assignment purpose we will use the, the concept that you taught us but for our real world uh, scenario instead of doing those things in a manual method i mean I, I, uh, there are some algorithms or there are some sites that use that are trained to label the data set to automatically detect AI generated text, right? So 
are they are those algorithms are effective to use or what's your suggestion on this yeah Thank it's a good point so like for some uh, ai generated uh, tools like i have just shared you some of the links below honestly they are not 100 percent uh uh, like hundred and they're not hundred percent right, but for some things that we've that we're going to create in uh, AI, I mean, I can just create here uh, some uh, information in ChatGPT and copying and trying it. They are hundred percent true. They can detect things that we can detect, by the way. But when the things go deeper and deeper, and when the peoples are going to be, uh, you know. When people are going to, okay, let's specify it like this. Why are you, why will we use the, those kinds of tools? If it is an exam or if it is an, uh, try, if we're trying to assist, to assist uh, submissions of some students or something like that, then they're supposed to be 100% right or not, okay? And yeah, they're, we're going to use those tools for that because it makes sense. Otherwise, for the specific purpose, actually, you also mentioned that, but for, for the purpose of, you know, people might put things as accurate as the uh, as accurate as it is humanly created they can put their uh, ai generated content as as much as they can humanly created and they can fake it they can absolutely fake it but while trying just you know copying some chat gpt tools here and trying it here it will definitely work but if it is something complicated they can be fake uh, i mean they uh, we can't fake them okay they're not hundred percent accurate if we have if you have some inf efforts in order to um, lie for your uh, for your uh, for the tool, and they are possibly uh, it's possible to lie. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Other question? Yeah. Okay. Then uh, thank you. I will address Ura's question for all of you in Slack. And we can end the recording here. Thank you, everyone. Bye.